Hey, Screen Junkies, we're taking two weeks off for the holidays. So this week, enjoy a compilation of the 10 worst films we've ever made trailers for. In a world where most movies are just okay, one film will be so bizarre, so upsetting, and so aggressively bad, the sheer amount of suck will collapse in on itself like a dying star and explode in a supernova of unintentional genius. The Room Tommy Wiseau stars in, writes, produces, and directs a film that puts the passion in Passion Project. Financed by a rumored $6 million of his own mysterious fortune and featuring three long minutes of his own mysterious butt cheeks, he's a man with a singular vision, a unique personal style, and a powerful message to share with the world. Maybe it's okay to give up on your dreams. How can they say this about me? I don't believe it. I show them. Journey to B-roll of San Francisco and meet Johnny, your everyday all-American Dracula. You know, people don't have to say it. They can feel it. Sometimes his emotions run hot. You are tearing me apart, Lisa! Sometimes he's so cold it's like he forgets he's on camera. But he always finds time to laugh at the little things. Anything for my princess. <laughs> <laughs> or laugh for no particular reason. <laughs> or laugh at things you really shouldn't be laughing at. One of them found out about it, beat her up so bad she ended up in a hospital on Guerrero Street. <laughs> Dude, what part of that is funny? Experience a story that at its core is a really simple love triangle where Johnny is engaged to Lisa, his wife of the future. You're my future wife. Lisa's your future wife. After all, she's my future wife. But she doesn't love him. I don't love Johnny anymore. I don't love him anymore. I don't love him anymore. But I don't love him. So she sleeps with Mark, his best friend. Johnny's my best friend. Johnny's my best friend. Johnny's my best friend. I know. He's your best friend. But set that aside, because the room has enough dangling plot threads to weave a blanket, like this endless, unexplained game of tuxedo football, Johnny's promotion at whatever his job is, these two friends who randomly appear and disappear throughout the movie, this drug deal that's never mentioned again. Where's my f***ing money, Denny? And the most casual eye of cancer of all time. I got the results of the test back. I definitely have breast cancer. You, uh, you gonna react to that? No? Okay. Cool. Cool. Most movies cut straight to the interesting parts, but The Room is not most movies, where if a man makes a tape, you get to see him set up the equipment. If two friends have lunch, you see what everyone in front of them ordered. And I'll take some uh, cheesecake and a coffee. Okay, why don't you guys have a seat? We'll have that right out for you. Hi, how you doing? Doing. What would you like? Can I get a bagel and a Sure. Great, sure. I'm gonna get a slice of cheesecake and a bottle of water. Yeah, that sounds good. Why don't you guys have a seat? We'll have that right out for you. Oh, hi, Susan. Well, hi, Johnny. And if a man gives his fiance flowers, you'll see exactly how that financial transaction went down. Spoiler alert. It was weird. How much is it? It'll be $18. Keep, go. Keep the change. Hi, doggy. You're my favorite customer. Thanks a lot. Bye. Do you like sex? Well, not for long, because you're about to watch an alien's approximation of human lovemaking, where a little man playing a little boy tries to join a threesome. Three is a crowd. <laughs> These two randoms act like toddlers while they do it. Arms up. And Johnny does his best to penetrate the area around Lisa's belly button. <laughs> Just close your eyes when the R&B comes on. Trust us. So enjoy this real-life version of Springtime for Hitler that's the pinnacle of So Bad It's Good Filmmaking, spawning midnight movie screenings, Oscar-caliber films about its creation, and the enduring mystery of who Tommy Wiseau is, where he's from, where his money comes from, and how old he is. But some mysteries are probably better left unsolved. We've seen the guy's taint. I don't need to know any more. Starring Football Spoon Art 
Entrances and exits. Oh, hey guys. I have to go now. Hey. Oh, hey, hey guys. Yeah. I've got to go. Oh, hi, Mark. I gotta go. Oh, hi, Mark. I have to go. Oh, hi, Danny. I have to go now. Oh, hey, Lisa. I better be going. Oh, hey, Peter. I gotta go. Oh, hi, Danny. I gotta go. Oh, hi, Michael. Oh, God, I have to run. Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about Johnny. He's just being a big baby. Generalizing about women. Women change their minds all the time. You think girls like to cheat like guys do? They never say what they mean, and they always play games. Sometimes they're just too smart. Sometimes they're flat out stupid. Other times they're just evil. Falling for no reason. <laughs> Lisa doesn't want to talk about it. I don't 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 want to talk about it. Focus! 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 And chicken? Just a little chicken. Chip, 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 The room. Not room. The room. Very different. I like to think Lisa's mom isn't playing a character. She's just a lady who wandered in and started commenting on what she saw. What are these characters doing here? How many people come in and out of this apartment every day? This is worse than Grand Central Station. You've already sat through Marvel's pathetic attempts at a live-action Spider-Man, Thor, Daredevil, and Punisher. But Marvel's not done embarrassing themselves yet in a movie so bad it wasn't even released in theaters. Captain America, the one you'll rent from Blockbuster Video. It's 1990 and DC rules the cinemas. Now, laugh while a desperate Marvel scrambles to get it together in this rushed attempt to catch up with Batman and Superman's critical and box office dominance. It may not be Superman. You got that right. The son of reclusive author J.D. Salinger stars as Steve Rogers for some reason, a California beach bum pretending to have polio. But when he volunteers to be zapped with an experimental flashlight, he'll become Captain America, a soldier who isn't a captain. He used a little more time to practice. And spends very little time in America. Buongiorno. Uh, speak English? The president has been kidnapped for taking a stand on the only issue that matters in the 90s, the environment. We're going to have to find millions of new jobs for the people who make disposable plastics, toxins, household pesticides. If we don't take this medicine now, we'll all die. Now, after spending 40 years frozen in a tiny snowbank, Cap must deal with the culture shock of today's America. I guess they didn't have VCRs up where you were. And save the president from the extremely lumpy Italian Red Skull and his extremely Italian henchman. It's him. Who, Baba? Captain America. Mama Mia, what a piece of crap. You thought Marvel's 1979 Captain America was bad? You ain't seen nothing yet. Stare at Captain America's rubber ears and wonder, why does Captain America have rubber ears? Didn't they just, you know, cut a hole for the actor's human ears? Thrill as his super strength and shield throwing powers return. Plus, things you never thought you'd see the Captain do, like run away, run away on a little bike, hide, and pretend to be nauseous so he can steal someone's car. Would you please pull over the car? I am going to get sick. Are you okay? You, you, yeah. Twice. Could you pull over for a minute? I think I'm gonna be sick. Are you okay? <gasps> so gear up for another crapped out Marvel superhero movie, full of terrible acting. Mr. President. Thanks. Ridiculously fake stuns. Fight scenes shot in complete darkness, and action sequences so bad, they either feel like they were shot in slow motion, or cut together by Sam Raimi on speed. Man, they'll never get this character right, unless DC buys the rights. Starring the Captain in the Rye, Reagan Stein, Budget Meg Ryan, and the cast of A Christmas Story? Huh, that's weird. Crapped in America. Yeah, this movie wasn't great. But what if they teamed up with Eric Kramer's Thor, Lou Ferrigno's Hulk, and Dolph Lundgren's Punisher? They could totally do an Avengers movie. A really 
awful Avengers movie. Ah, who am I kidding? Just hang it up, Marvel. DC rules. From M. Night Shyamalan. Oh boy, this should be good. Comes one of the best laugh out loud comedies of 2008. That was supposed to be a horror movie? Plan on murdering me in my sleep. What? No! Wow, that didn't happen. The Happening. You love The Sixth Sense and Unbreakable. You liked Parts of Signs. The Village and Lady in the Water made you say, uh oh. But before the violent car crash that was the last airbender, there was The Happening, a film about a thing that happens. There appears to be an event happening. They've been affected by whatever's happening. Could this really be happening? Why is this happening? There's something happening in a few states. Whatever's happening is happening to smaller and smaller populations. Then stops happening. Nothing happened. It's even dumber than it sounds. Mark Wahlberg delivers a Donnie Wahlberg level performance as Elliot Moore, a science teacher with one facial expression, who's so inquisitive, he phrases everything like a question. The toxin? The toxin is affecting them? Together, along with his dead-eyed wife and this silent dead-eyed girl, they'll run from the least scary monster in film history, gently rustling leaves. Wow, they actually found trees more boring than the ends. Experience the first movie since Groundhog Day to make suicide look kinda hilarious as trees begin to emit a toxin that makes us kill ourselves in the most convoluted ways possible in this non-mystery, non-thriller that spoils itself in the first act. It's the plants. Leaving you with plenty of time for awkward dialogue. Why are you giving me one useless piece of information at a time? We can't just stand here as an uninvolved observer. I need a second, okay? Just give me a second. We're awkward pauses. We are gonna die here. Whatever this is. And not much else. Hey, what's your take on hot dogs, random person? You know, hot dogs get a bad rap. They got a cool shape, they got protein. You like hot dogs, don't you? Good to know. So prepare for a viewing experience that feels like The Walking Dead minus zombies plus a wind machine full of complete non sequiturs. We're perfectly normal. On Blackwater, keep on rolling. And jarring shifts in tone. That's all, we're all gonna be fine? I got her, Julia. Don't take my daughter's hand unless you mean it. It was chasing. <laughs> I knew that, I knew that. As you wait for the inevitable Shyamalan twist ending, that never comes. The twist is, there is no twist. The trees did it, then it ends. The event must have ended before we went out there. Uh. Starring, grass, ferns, bushes, leaves, plastic trees, oaks, elms. I I'm not sure what kind of tree that is. I think it's a maple. Oh, thank you. Maples. And a mannequin. Uh, hello? Are you okay? What the f is happening? Should be more interested in science, Jake. You know why? Because your face is perfect. <laughs> okay, seriously, what's up with this movie? Hey, guys. Why would you keep that scene in the movie? Why are you eyeing my lemon drink? Who calls it a lemon drink? It's lemonade! I suppose the kind thing for me to do is to offer you supper. What the hell is happening right now? You meet a strange lady who's talking crazy to you and you don't say a word to her? Then you just join her for dinner? What? No! Toy Story was visionary, Inside Out was a true original, and Wreck-It Ralph was still pretty good. But now, the secret world under our own premise ends up like Taco Bell through a human centipede in The Emoji Movie. 
experience a film that only comes around when a studio exec has custody of the kids for a weekend, where the underlying IP is the top priority, while story, plot, character, humor, and tone come tied for dead last. In a film that may not be the worst one ever made, but it is the worst example of Hollywood farting out 80 minutes of cynical branded advertising and pretending it's a movie. Too honest? Here's a poop joke. You might be making too much stink out of all this. You know emojis? Those little pictures morons use instead of words? Did you ever wonder if they were alive? No? How about what their day job is like? No? Their love life? Never? Well, too bad, because you're going inside the bland animated world of your phone whether you like it or not. Full of three-dimensional representations of two-dimensional text icons with one dimension to their personalities and zero depth to any of this. Gene. Are you finished? <laughs> Meet Gene, the meh emoji, voiced by humanity's own Matt T.J. Miller. He needs to believe in himself, get the girl, save the world, and probably some other generic protagonist goals you'll miss while you nap through the second act. Watch him and the carpool karaoke guy travel from app to app to show off all the cross promotion Sony was able to sell. But because internet culture moves faster than it takes to animate a movie, all the apps are outdated. Welcome to Just Dance! Candy Crush. All the slang is embarrassing. Hashtag blessed. NBD, dude. Slay! Ooh, shade. And all the emojis have about six months of relevance left until they're replaced by Apple's horrifying human emoji hybrids. <laughs> We've got a chicken. <laughs> okay, think of the laziest joke you can think of. In the nosebleeds. Uh, I'm standing right here. No, even lazier. What kind of business? Monkey business. <laughs> now, dumb it down to the point where it barely makes sense anymore. Is that the time? Hey, my eyes are up here, pal. Congratulations. Now you're writing the emoji movie. Suffer through a parade of dumb kids humor bordering on anti-comedy, where the mad joke is running to the ground so hard you can't tell what happiness is anymore. I'm just beaming with pride. I'm so nervous, I could almost shrug. Stop. Don't overreact. Uh-oh. I told you not to overreact. Please stop. Right now, I'm so overwhelmed with passionate feelings for you. I get it. This is jazzy. Ah! But nowhere does this comedy come closer to tragedy than Sir Patrick Stewart playing a turd. Oh, shit. Proof that you can give a man talent, awards, and a knighthood, but it's nothing compared to the power of a paycheck. You're so soft, Pope. Not too soft, I hope. So experience the perfect film for our times <gasps> that doesn't teach you the positive role of sadness like Inside Out or turn a cash grab into something insightful like the Lego movie, but instead teaches children that life is a meaningless, mediocre, joyless slob that takes place mostly on your phone and only exists to serve a global conglomerate's interest. Uh oh, too honest again. Boob joke! Just doing my duty. <laughs> what? What did I say? Starring. The following actual quotes from the reviews of the Emoji Movie. This toxic piece of kitty trash isn't worth the pixels. Hear that? It's the end of the world. A viewer leaves the Emoji Movie a colder person, not only angry at the film for being unconsciously bad, but resentful of it for making them feel angry. And the poop jokes are minimal. Poop. <laughs> A lot of good people probably had to work really hard on this movie for a really long time. So I'm sorry, not for anything I said about the film, just, you know, those lost years of your life. From a society that refuses to stop making movies out of fanfic... What are butt plugs? ...comes two films based on a 15-year-old's Wattpad that became smash hits thanks to a demographic I've aged way out of. Hey, hey! Close on, young lady! In my day, movie teens act at age appropriately. Oh, yeah. That's better. The Kissing Booths. Get ready for an old-school rom-com with all the hallmarks of a John Hughes classic. Sexual harassment. <gasps> Double standards for women. And there you are treating her like some slut that you picked up at the club. And Molly Ringwald. As you journey to a Los Angeles so white, you'll swear you're actually in South Africa. Because you are. He goes and gets into a fight on the first day of school. <laughs> Great story. Now about those blood diamonds. 
Meet Elle, a high school girl struggling to escape her inner monologue. In spite of what happened tonight, I couldn't stop thinking about what Noah said to me. Whose voiceover butts in every five minutes, like a Netflix version of Clippy. You obviously couldn't see this, but my heart just did a backflip. Yeah, that's what the acting is for. Never great to hear your childhood crush say it's super gross in your pants. Look, if I'd wanted to listen to this crap, I'd buy the audiobook, okay? Life throws curves at you. Shut up! Ugh, this is all your fault, kissing booth. Ah! Set your lips to smooch when Elle is caught between the Flynn brothers, two dudes whose parents work in the money factory. There's Lee who builds a friendship with Elle based on 21 simple rules. Rule number one, only your best friend gets to know your birthday wishes. Rule number seven, no matter how mad you are at your best friend, you have to forgive them if they give you ice cream. Rule number 18, always be happy for your bestie success. Rule number success. six, if you can't tell your best friend about something you're doing, you probably shouldn't be doing Rule number 19, always go to the same school as your best. Rule number two, never share our secrets with anyone else. Rule number 16, when your bestie needs you there, you need to be Rule there. number five, always do the Thanksgiving wishbone with your bestie. But Rule 9 says relatives are off limits, so no kissing his older brother Noah, while he has to keep his hands off her dad and little brother. But rules were made to be broken, and sparks will fly when Elle gets trapped in her very first abusive relationship. Is he violent? Check. <laughs> Controlling? Duh. Get the car out! Blames the victim? Natch. Wearing a skirt like that is asking for it. Still, he's freakishly tall and she got boobs over the summer. So climb that red flag, girl. Just get a burner phone and memorize the exits to his sex gazebo. So creepy, yet so hot. Hormones will rage thanks to their high school blindfolded kissing booth. Which isn't just a gross idea that should get the entire school administration canned. It's also the biggest cliche in teen fiction since the popular girl click who just wants to start drama. Oh, they do that one too? How about a get too wasted and table dance scene? A big prom night finale? Oh. A Team Jacob love triangle in the sequel? You have no business talking to me. Really? Well, why don't you just throw in a dramatic run through the airport sequence for good measure, hmm? It's cliches all the way down, people. This film exists for one reason and one reason only. Ads. Wait, who's filming him? So settle in for some good old-fashioned Zoomer escapism, where everyone is pretty, finds love, gets into Harvard, and pays their way with Dance Dance Revolution tournament winnings. But at the end of the day, they're still relatable because sometimes they fall down go boo. In what may be two garbage films with horrible messages. But if they made movies out of the cringy stuff you wrote at 15, well, I'm still taking offers for Ninja Viking vs. Boo Police. Netflix, give me a call. Not in this lifetime, girl. Never gonna happen. Starry. You flopped this, King. Simpin' ain't easy. I did not hit her, it's bullshit. I did not. Oh, highly. Paycheck in pink. Melted plastics. 30 and flirty. So many. Jorts. Teenagers. Marco always has the last word. Congratulations. Good shot. There she is. Rachel never leaves happy. I am Rachel. so thank, thank you, thank you for the dance. Rachel. Rachel, and I never wanted to be a freaking mug in the first place! And this old man on patrol checking the sex gazebo. Not another teen movie until you've learned your lesson. Does everyone in this movie delete their text history? Shady. From a company limping towards bankruptcy, the studio behind six Bruce Willis movies in the last four years, Stanley's former business partner who he has a restraining order against. The guy in the Paris Hilton sex tape? 
And E from Entourage? Comes a film that isn't the Godfather movie we need, but the Godfather movie we deserve right now. He was 12 years old. He didn't have hair on his prick. Uh, Gotti. Welcome to New York, a city where anything can happen, like the ghost of John Gotti telling you his life story. Let me tell you something. About the time he told his son his life story. Remember what I used to tell you guys. That's full of other people telling John Gotti's life story. Let me tell you about your old man. It's kind of like John Gotti Inception, except the person who's dreaming fell asleep watching Goodfellas. What's the matter with you? What's the matter with you? They open up the books. Opened up the books. What the f is so funny about me? What the f is so fing funny? <laughs> Good fellas, there was, there was non good fellas. Enter a soulless mob purgatory that fails to meet even the baseline requirements of storytelling. But hey, forget about it, because who needs a clear hero, a message, any insight into how the mob really worked, or a coherent plot when you've got accents that would make my cousin Vinny blush? Cool, clear water. It is on the cover of the paper. Oh, what? It's either me or them. They're killing us, dent or nothing. For the bar. And anyone else who's in the car with him. No. Yeah. And I'm asking you. Two youths. You got a lot of thinking to do. These are the lies you gotta live with. The musical stylings of Pitbull. Go get us, pop us, gangsters. And a rapid fire parade of generic mobster names throughout the entire film. Gaspet Castle. Joe Piney. Frank and Sammy Bull. Freddy DeVico. Benny Can. Vescucci. The Columbos. The Bananos. Willie Boy. Bobby Boriello. Vincent de Cingiganti. Man, this movie's got more names than Polly Tin Names Del Vecchio. You know him, right? He's friends with Joey the Trout and Swamp Ass Bacalari. Over by the Catchatory brother's place. So who are you going to believe? The professional critics behind their little keyboards who gave it a combined 0% on Rotten Tomatoes or all the real fans who signed up for a Rotten Tomatoes account the month the movie came out, only left reviews for the two films produced by MoviePass and never posted again. Huh? Huh? Get the f*** out of here. Starring It's a me, Gottio. Young John Gotti Jr. Old John Gotti Jr.? I could watch a cage for hours. I got you, babe. The menu at an Olive Garden. The Caesar salad is to die for. I made you use a tuna sandwich okay. for the road. Okay, with some pizza, spaghetti, meatballs, or something. He's got the shrimp in there, Mingy, like this. All I want is a sandwich. You see the sandwich, you see the tuna sandwich. That's all I want. And the best line Joe Pesci never got to say. I'll park a bus up your ass fucking sideways. What? Movie pass. But only if you have the support of all five boroughs. Queens, Brooklyn, Manhattan, Staten Island, the Bronx. Huh? Why would one New York mobster remind another New York mobster what the five boroughs of New York are? Unless you thought you could steal from another Scorsese movie without us noticing. Each of the five points is a finger. When I close my hand, it becomes a fist. Got him. In 2020, we got our first taste of Morbius. But after a short delay, a long delay, a medium-sized delay, a little bitty baby delay, and one more big fat delay for good measure, audiences everywhere are demanding. Stop playing the Morbius trailer every time I see a film. It's been two years. It's Dr. Michael Morbius at your service. No! Morbius. Meet Michael Morbius, a doctor living with a serious challenge, being Jared Leto. His search for a cure will take him from the Cave of Wonders to his much hidden, very secret experiments. I wouldn't go in there if I were you. To sucking eight guys dry on a boat while his girlfriend is asleep. Doesn't count, babe. We're in international waters. Jared Leto plays a misunderstood genius who's way too cool to accept the Nobel Prize. American scientist rejects Nobel Prize. So of course he thinks this character is based on his real persona. There's something um, uh, quite nice about that and the intimacy of sharing who you are uh, with, with, with audiences. Once he mixes bad with man, he'll get all the things you'd expect except COVID like sonar bat abs hollow little bones 
and the ability to, like, force push bats at your enemies with your mind. Are we sure these are bad things? But these powers come with a catch. Now he's thirsty for blood. And instead of eating animals that actual bats eat, he'll go straight for human juice, forcing us to watch him go to town on a blood bag every few minutes of screen time. Whoa, this is just like camp when I found out where they hid the Capri Suns. But Mikey won't more of a loan. Meet a supporting cast whose backstory got cut for time. Like Tyrese, a bland FBI agent whose robot arm only appears in the trailer. In my head canon, he's Jax. Martine, a doctor whose only interesting aspect gets punted to the sequel. Anna, a child Morbius puts into a coma and never visits again. We have to induce a coma. Hope she's feeling better. And Jared Harris, a skilled thespian who lends the film much needed gravity. And he's dead. Watch the good Dr. Morbo take on the 11th Dr. Milo. Matt Smith acting with the freedom of someone who realizes they're in a train wreck. So they might as well have some fun while it goes totally off the rails. When these vamps are on the hunt, the PG-13 action is so mild, they won't even bother to show it. But when these two pale boys finally collide, strap in for effects so honest, it looks like they added stink lines to everyone to drive home how crappy it looks. <laughs> So after the success of No Way Home, enjoy Sony's latest attempt to suck every last drop of legally approved continuity from the MCU. Like how about the Daily Bugle? Huh? That's a thing over there. Maybe a Venom reference. He's in both verses now, right? Well, we haven't had anything this good since that thing in San Francisco. Hey look, it's the villain from two Spider-Mans ago. That doing anything for you? No? What if we put a gun to his head and made him read a script from Bryce over in marketing? I'm not sure how I got here. Has to do with Spider-Man, I think. I'm still figuring this place out, but I think a bunch of guys like us should team up. You know, I never thought that this is Katana, she's got my back, could be topped, but bravo, Mr. Keaton, bravo. Starring Subway Jared, Tyrese's Polices, Count White Chocula. Hi, Dr. Nick. Not another Martine movie. I'm not sure how he got here. Has to do with Spider-Man, I think. He's still figuring this place out. But I think guys like them should team up. And when Mom won't make tendies for dinner. I'm starting to get hungry. You don't want to see me when I'm hungry. Shitty, shitty fang fang. You know, I hate to say it, but W was way ahead of the Morbius threat. Tonight, I ask you to pass legislation to prohibit the most egregious abuses of medical research, creating human-animal hybrids. From the once successful director who turned his own name into box office poison, comes the poorly directed, lazily written, terribly shot, poorly acted, clumsily edited, oddly paced, insulting adaptation of The Last Airbender in crappily converted 3D. Prepare for the vibrant world of Nickelodeon's beloved avatar to get M. Night shit upon in the worst cartoon adaptation since Dragon Ball Evolution. Watch as the ethnically diverse heroes you know and love are brought to life as generic white kids and the ethnically diverse villains Stay ethnically diverse. Wonder in amazement at how a $150 million movie ended up with some of the worst special effects ever put to film. Scenes that weren't lit properly. And unknown child actors who are bad even by child actor standards. They haven't been able to conquer big cities like Ba Sing Se, but they're making plans, I'm sure. So, are you the Avatar Ong? Uh, I hope these kids stayed in school. Journey across four magical kingdoms where a chosen few sort of have the power to bend the elements to their will. Firebenders who can't catch anything on fire. 
waterbenders who can't get this guy wet, and earthbenders who could just have easily picked up this rock and thrown it. But when the evil firebender Prince Zuko goes on the warpath, Bring me all your elderly! Humanity's last hope is a boy who can master every element, the Avatar. Oh man, I wish. No, this pouty one with all the henna tattoos doing his green belt karate demonstration. Join Ang and two unnecessary sidekicks as they struggle to cram 20 episodes of backstory into one movie with techniques like weird introductions. My name is Katara, and I'm the only waterbender left in the Southern Water Tribe. Weird compliments. You are a gifted strategist. Your failure in the Hundred Day Siege of Ba Sing Se won't be held against you. Awkward toasts. I wanted to thank young Prince Zuko. As you know, Fire Lord has banished his son, the Prince, and renounced his love of him. And a super long Star Wars title crawl. Prosperity and peace filled You really should just fast forward through this part. And maybe even the whole movie. Starring this girl. This kid, this other kid, this dude, who cast this thing? Oh, the guy from The Daily Show, and Slumdog Millionaire, The Last Airbender. If you thought this was bad, what do you see After Earth? From the director of, uh, oh god, not him again, comes Will Smith's biggest mistake since turning down the Matrix. After Earth. Prepare for Shyamalan's signature slow pace and joyless tone, but now with ten times as much sci-fi mumbo-jumbo. I detected graviton vibrations in the hull. How? Graviton buildup could be a precursor to mass expansion. Mass expansion is one in a million. The pull of our own graviton weight could set the thing off. Oh, oh God, are you guys really gonna make me do this one? Ugh, okay. Get ready for the story of a talented celebrity dad and his less talented bratty kid. I am dedicated, have studied, and consistently display conduct becoming of a ranger, sir. Who takes on a challenge he's not ready for. And you think I'm a coward? You're wrong! Gee, wonder where they got that idea. Watch as Will Smith, one of the world's most charismatic actors, plays a man with no charisma. What do you think you should have done? Because really that is all that matters. Named Cypher Rage. <laughs> Very funny, guys. What's his real name? General Cypher Rage. Of the Prime Command is Cypher Rage. General Cypher Rage. You've got to be kidding me. Watch as Cypher Rage and his son, Katai Rage? Dramatize what it's like to live in the Smith household. Go to my room. Are you asking me or telling me? May I go to my room, sir? Denied! Sit down! But when father and son are forced to bond, disaster strikes as they crash on a terrifying version of After Earth. Warning, this planet has been declared unfit for human habitation. Full of non-threats like monkeys, eagles, whales, bugs, snakes, foliage and the coal. Everything on this planet has evolved to kill humans. Has it though? Because it kind of looks like before Earth to me. So take a knee. Take a knee. Take a knee. Take a knee, cadet. Take a knee. And watch a movie of Will Smith watching a movie of Jaden Smith. I will be able to see everything that you see. In the most blatant example of Hollywood nepotism since the third generation of the Wayans brothers. My suit's turned black. I like it, but I think it's something bad. You like it, but you think it's something bad? I like it, but I think it's something bad. Did someone actually read this before they made it a movie? You know what? I can't do this. This movie is too dumb on too many levels. I mean, why does everything on Earth freeze at night? Wouldn't that kill all the greenery? And the animals? Speaking of animals, why does that eagle adopt Jaden as one of its young? Then commit eagle suicide to save him from the cold? It hasn't figured out how to live in the cold over the last thousand years of being an eagle? Seriously? We traveled all across the galaxy to stay on Earth? And they didn't even make Earth cool? Where are all the buildings? The survivors? Anything? God, this movie is so stupid! Look, I gotta get out of here. It's just not worth it. You guys don't have to pay me for this one. Just call me next week for Walking Dead. That sucked. That is correct.
After 42 volumes of comics, 18 movies, and 15 seasons of television, one live-action adaptation will ignore everything people loved about the Dragon Ball franchise. In America's biggest insult to Japanese culture since Hiroshima, Dragon Ball Evolution. Prepare for Fox's half-assed attempt to cash in on their expiring rights to Dragon Ball. It's an adaptation that steals from everything except the source material, featuring elements of The Matrix, Lord of the Rings, Twilight, and The Last Airbender. Shuttle Crane Strike is the most basic of all the airbending techniques. Oh, come on! When the Sith Lord Piccolo escapes his ancient prison, somehow, Goku, a student at video game high school, must find the Dragon Balls before something about an eclipse, or else something about Uzuru, the evil monkey werewolf. It doesn't make any sense. Can I get a little help here? We'll take it from here, honest trailer voice man voice. Thanks, guys. I'm totally lost. All right, listen up. Dragon Ball is the epic saga of a martial artist who... Wait, that's Goku? Well, this is an outrage. I never went to school. Also, I don't think you're white. I'm a Saiya genie. Anyway, it's about Noku here's quest to collect all seven wish-granting Dragon Balls before... Whoa! When did I get a hot Asian sidekick? Maybe this movie isn't so bad. I am Buten Roshi! Be principal! <laughs> My grandfather is dead. <laughs> Nope, it sucks. And along the way, Goku was joined by his best friend, Krillin! Who should be showing up in the movie any second now! Any second! You're not in the movie. Damn it! I gotta be honest, guys. This still seems pretty stupid. But, like, the show is way better. I fly around in the magic cloud, fight a shape-shifting man-pig, and help a 300-year-old man get laid! Have we sold you yet? Not really, but thanks for trying. You bet. Bye-bye, honest trailer man, voice man. Hey, my roof. Sorry. Uh, power up for a movie that doesn't just sound bad, it looks bad, as the epic key attacks from the cartoons are replaced with CGI hand farts. With these... as the awkward level goes over 9,000 in a movie full of long pauses. You're different. I like different. Terrible dialogue. Grandpa! I'm so happy to see you! And Justin Chadwin's forehead vein. So, gather up all your balls. <laughs> for the one wish that everyone can agree on. Make this movie never exist. Starring. How dare they make a movie about Kakarot and not invite me? Oh god, not another one. I am Vegeta, Prince of Osea. Oh my god, is that the beta male? Looks like a tiger with Down syndrome. Never mind, bullet dodged. Would you like to do the honors? Of course I will. Starring. Geico. TTs. The Mask, The Keymaker, Crouching Tiger Dead Career, Nobody's Favorite Ghostbuster, Mighty Joe Young, and Not Laura Croft. Oh god, what a steaming pile. Dragon Ball Evolution. So wait, Kakanot wishes a guy he just met back to life at the end of the movie, but he just lets the man who raised him from birth stay dead. And I can dig that.